All right, it's time. Bristol Dirt. Let's take a look at it. What's up, everybody? Thomas Brandon here. Thank you very much, as always, for joining me. And like I said, today we're going to be taking a look at Bristol Dirt. Now, really quick, um, I am not going to go through like every dirt car, um, you know, street stocks. I don't run legends. I don't run. Um, we're going to take a look. I'm in the 360 right now. A uh, buddy of mine, Shay Paulo, he did um, the 410s. And so if you want to see um, the kind of a 410 on this track, I'll have a link to uh, his video down in the description below. And so you can head over and check that one out. But um, I will have setups for the 360 and 410s, the pro and super late models, the big block mod, um, you know, midget and the non-wing uh, 360 sprint car. OK, um, those will have setups. Um, the other cars, you know, UMP mods, no setup for those. I will be doing a review of the UMP mod um, later. Uh, it'll probably be out tomorrow. But, uh, you know, since they've got that series fixed this season coming up, um, I'm not going to be putting out a setup for that car right now just because I need to work on that car some more because it's completely different, completely different. But that's a different video. We're talking about Bristol. So first impressions of the track. I really like it. Um, iRacing did a very good job. Um, one thing that I noticed, uh, the track has got two distinct corners. You actually don't realize this um, uh, until you get on there and race. You know, when you when when it's loading up, you can see like, oh, well, yeah, it's actually you got a you know, smaller corner and a, and a wider corner. And when you get on the track, and you start running. You're like, oh, wow. Yeah, it's a it's a big difference. So that is unique, which I actually like. Another thing that's really unique is the transitions from the corner to the straightaways. And then also the shelf can be nasty um if you catch the shelf wrong here the shelf here which i'm talking about the apron it's like linear on steroids i mean it can really just shoot you right up the track or snap the car you got to be really really careful with it also the transitions from the corner to the straightaway you can get some you know a, a dip going in a dip coming out both of those can affect you Going in, it can really make the car want to snap around if you're not, you know, careful on your entry. And then on exit, it can also make you want to kind of jump and push to the wall. So a couple of things there to keep in mind. Um, the winged cars, so far everything that I've done, and keep in mind I've done, you know, just a couple of tests and an open practice last night during my live stream. And which, if you want to catch my live stream, shameless plug, um, I do live stream every Wednesday and Thursday. Yesterday was Tuesday, of course. Uh, I was doing a special, you know, kind of a special one. I, I, I live stream sometimes on Tuesdays, but every Wednesday and Thursday, I live stream on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Tommy underscore Brandon. Link down in the description below. But, anyways, during the live stream last night, we were doing an open practice, and the, the track war in pretty good i was actually uh impressed with how the track wore in it doesn't seem to slick off nearly as quick as the other newer tracks you know like cedar lake or weed sport um, it does wear off quicker than the older ones but it doesn't seem to be as quick as cedar lake you know or weed sport so I actually really like it. We ran a big block race last night. Um, I hosted one and we did a 20 minute practice and then qualify. And there was like 25, 30 cars. Like there was a quite a, there was quite a few cars. And by the time we got to the feature, the track state was actually really good. And in the feature, it got even better. So I was really happy with the dynamic uh, track states. I think they did a really good job on that. Now, negatives there is a big negative which i'm sure they will fix uh very soon but when you get a caution you pace like five laps so i racing thinks no matter what car you're in that it is a stock car race it's a cup race and so you have like five laps of pacing so you can pit this sucks it, it it's oh my god Somebody last night called it eye pacing, and it's that. It was really, really bad. 
yeah, I mean, the track is huge, you know, and then to sit there and pace five laps, oh my god, it was, it just was agonizing, it really was, so the sooner they fix that, the better, but other than that, I don't have any complaints about this track, the track is incredible, if you've got, you know, just a decent system, go run a few laps and then put it on like TV3 and just look at the detail. It's incredible. The detail that they put into this track is absolutely amazing. It really is. Um, just um, visually, you know, the physics of it, all of it, like I said, it's a, they did a really, really good job. Hats off to, to iRacing. I really like this. Let's take a look here really quick. The setup that we're running here, um, I've been doing a lot of testing with this. And in fact, I want to change something right now because get that changed. There we go. One of the things that, um, and we'll get back to the gear. One of the things I've known, uh, noticed is running um, a fairly low amount of stagger to start. Uh, only 12 inches. Normally, I never go below 12 and a half to start off with. We're starting off at 12. This is a track, by the time you get to the feature, I think you're going to be running, you know, 10 and a half, 10 inches of stagger, which is very low for myself, okay? I never get that low, but here, it just less stagger feels good. Now, you one thing that you want to keep in mind is this track, the way that the corners are, like I said, the way that the car goes into the corner, there's an aspect of letting the car turn itself in and then having to turn yourself, you know, actually later and then following it through. You'll see when we go and turn some laps, it's a really unique corner and it has to do with the insane level of banking and the transition between the straightaway and the banking. That's what makes it so unique. And so stagger, I think, is going to be one of those adjustments where if you find yourself loose on entry, man, you know, go to your stagger. And if you find yourself tight, go to your stagger. I think that's going to be a huge, huge sticking point for a lot of people. I really do. On chassis side of things, um, wing 24, I do not see a situation at this track um, that you're ever going to want the wing above you know, beyond 24 degrees, right? So at the other tracks, even like Eldora, when it gets slick, man, yeah, man, I'll run my wing at 30 degrees. I might be running it forward, right? Only at negative one or negative two, but I'll put it at 30. You know, same thing at like a Knoxville or a Volusia when it gets super slick. Here, I don't see it. I, I mean, it's 24 degrees. There might be a situation where the track is really slick and it's around the bottom and that's one thing you're going to notice with these wing cars is the line is around the bottom, middle to bottom, even when it gets slick. It's faster. Last night we were doing our test and um, I was running and there was a bunch of people, but one of the guys that was in there was Shay Paula, who's a pro. And he was running laps around the bottom and he was lifting around the bottom. And that was faster than me going above the slick wide open. So the bottom is going to be the line. I don't see a situation with the wing cars. Keep in mind the other cars, cars that don't have the downforce that these cars have. It's been around the top because the momentum is insane. But for the wing cars, it's just bottom. Now, the track's wide enough to where you can actually run a few different lines, you know, and still be, you know, middle to bottom because it's so wide and have some pretty good racing. But I haven't found a situation with these wing cars yet, but you're going to be around the top. And so, you know, to get back to what I was my initial point, there might be a situation where the track is crazy slick, where you might want to make the wing 26 degrees. Right. But like, I mean, other than that, I don't see it just 24, 24 and just move it back. OK, uh, another thing that you might want to play with. Normally, I kind of tell people to just not mess with this too often. But this track is an exception. The Pittman arm length. If you find yourself being a little twitchy, um, go down on this to maybe 11 or 10. That'll help the steering slow down just a tiny bit. It's not a massive adjustment, but there is a difference. And so that is something that can help with you. Um, I wouldn't mess with the steering box ratio. I would just leave that at whatever you run. But the Pittman arm, that is definitely an adjustment that you can make to help keep yourself a little bit straighter if you find having, you know, if you find that you have a hard time with that. 
Um, bars, I've been playing a lot with this, and um, this was a test that I was just doing. I find, you know, a 10.50 and a 10 and a quarter on the right front and left front. On the rear, I actually, I find stiffer bars on the rear to be um, nice. I find a stiffer setup overall to be good because the track, like I said, you're carrying so much speed here to have that stability you know, seems to make the car just not only more comfortable, but faster because the downforce is insane. When I was looking at the downforce numbers in Motec, I was shocked at what we were achieving in terms of downforce on the center foil, which is the center part of the wing. Um, it was crazy. It just was. So the amount of downforce that you're getting at this track is so much, you know, having a stiffer car, um, you know, even just not only to start off with, but kind of throughout the night felt much better to me so i mean something to keep in mind shocks um this is a definitely a unique shock package in the terms that we're really light on our bumps you know um i found that going above you know three and a half or maybe four on the right rear the car just wants to rotate too much and then you know starting off with the left rear anything higher than three or three and a half for me i found that the car wants to kind of dart to the wall a lot of that i believe has to do with the transition effect that i was talking about between the straightaway and the corner but you know in terms of the shock package like i said for a starting point this is where we're at right now and then um six gallons of fuel i find that the fuel mileage from the testing i've done is about on par with you know in eldora with the bigger tracks right i mean it's somewhere it's somewhere between like 0.5 and 0.6 you know per gallon and so um you know eight laps you're you know five or six gallons right and you know it's just just to be safe um as always with my setups verify the fuel especially these free ones don't just take them and trust that it's got enough fuel always test it yourself and make sure okay please don't send me a message hey man tommy i was leading the feature and i ran out of fuel with your setup with two laps to go please because i'm going to tell you did you verify the fuel all right verify it because there's a lot of factors and this track is so big that if you're running the top right you might need an extra two gallons compared to running the pot i mean it's that drastic with the fuel so always keep that in mind all right verify test make sure that it's got enough but anyways that's the setup um let's go out let's turn a couple of laps now a couple of things like i said and i've already mentioned it um the transition you can see right here there's the transition that when you're at speed can be a lot and then the transition going in okay can really make the car want to snap on you all right also the shelf um which is the apron is basically right there you see how i caught the shelf is basically like linear on steroids it will shoot you straight to the wall if you're not careful can see turning the car in you, there's not a whole lot that you really got to do i mean the the amount of wheel that you got to put in is so minor the car will just go right to the bottom now in terms of different lines um i do think that uh cut down lines diamond lines are going to be very very popular and very fast where you can go in and just get a run down the banking there's a bump right there so be careful also you can do it at the extreme where you're going to actually cut down to the apron um, we were doing this last night in the big block race and it was actually a lot of fun you can really cut down there but you see that transition that i hit if you're not careful you can really get out of whack so you want to hit that transition nice and smooth and straight because it can really make the car really twitchy. You see that bump. Also, sliders here. Um, there's not a lot of sliding. 
uh, when the track is fresh. One thing I do think is going to be nice is that you're gonna be able to do a lot of short sliders, right? So stuff like that, where you just kind of cut down and pop up in the middle of people, where you can, you know, maybe do a cut down on one corner, get underneath them, and then, you know, kind of pop up in the middle for, you know, the, the pass. So I do think it's going to be a fun track. Like I said, I haven't done any racing on it except in the big block modified. We did do the open practice in the 360s last night. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought the track was really racy and, you know, we had a couple dozen cars. So it was it was definitely fun. So I think it's going to be a fun track, very unique. Uh, we actually, in my league, um, we changed our schedule. Uh, you know, we you know, moved one track out. We moved Charlotte from week 11, you know, which is next week. That was going to be our final week. We moved Charlotte from the last week to tonight. And then we've got Bristol now to finish off the season. So um, that's what I think of it. You know, I like it that much. It's a really, really fun and unique track in these cars. So anyways, that's the wing sprints. Let's head over. Let's take a look at the late models next. All right, so now it's time for the super late models. Um, now we've got our setup here, uh, three and a half inches of stagger, tire pressures. Um, what I found with this car running uh, the rear end, a lot softer than I typically uh, will start off with, but uh, this track is so big, it's so fast, so hooked up. You know, we're really just uh, just hammered down on, these, on this car. Now, one thing that I noticed was... Um, I oh, actually want that to be a little bit higher. There we go. Um, one thing that I know, whoops, that I noticed uh, when running the late model here is that when you're trying to get the car into the corner, you know, to get the car rotated and set, um, when this track is is fresh like this, you're basically just giving the car a breath. I mean, it's just barely letting out and getting the car in the end of the corner on the bars and then you're back on the throttle now yes you can you know kind of if you want to get out really quick rotate it fast and then get back on it it's really up to you i find just rolling out gently like that and then getting back on the gas i find to be the best method but that's for me as you can see it's just it's really hooked up this car, although I wouldn't consider this like a high downforce car, like the um, wing sprints, it does produce quite a bit of downforce because you're going so fast here. Um, the car really gets sucked down to the track. When I was looking at the data in MoTeC, I was pretty surprised by the downforce numbers that this thing was generating. Now I found that this car, when the track is tacky, it's basically around the bottom. I actually think this car is going to be a, a fun one to race at Bristol because I think you're going to see multiple grooves in terms of uh, where to run when the track is slick. I do think the top will be dominant, but I, I also believe that the bottom will be a viable line if you can get the car to roll the bottom because the track has got so much banking, even on the bottom, that um, if you can get it on the bars and keep it straight and keep up your momentum, you can still get a really good run out of the corners, even compared to somebody running the top, because the top is so far around, right? You can see right there, I got that transition going in. And it's gonna be tricky to run the top, I think, with these cars, especially when it's right up on the wall. So I do think these cars are one where you might actually be able to run the bottom when it gets slick. Um, you're going to have to really roll it nice and smooth. But the amount of mo momentum, whoops, the amount of momentum that you can keep with this car, you know, around the top is, it's really incredible. My sense of surroundings is so bad when I get out of a sprint car or something and I hop in one of these cars like a late model or a big block mod, I'm always scraping the wall.
All right, so that's the late models. That's the super late. Like I said, I'll have setups for the super late model and the pro late model. They'll be in the Discord. Um, but let's head over. Let's take a look now at the big block modified. All right, so now we've got the big block mod, and this will be the last one that we take a look at. Now, um, for the big block mods, uh, we did run a race in the big block mods last night. Um, I hosted a race session. We did 30 laps. Uh, when we finally got a long green flag run, it was a lot of fun. Um, we had some really, really good racing. And what I noticed is that these things, um, they're, they're really fast. I, to me, these cars were made for Bristol dirt or Bristol dirt was made for these cars. Um, these cars are awesome at this track. They really are the speed and momentum that you can carry here is just incredible with these things now you still have to work that throttle you're not just gonna flat foot it okay you can still get wheel spin especially as the track slicks off but it's not much roll out the throttle a little bit on the entry and then from center out you're rolling back in and you're gonna get a really good run now since we did a race and there was some very, very good drivers in that race yesterday, I can tell you that lap times around here, um, you know, low six, low to mid 16s is what we were seeing. Um, I believe Tyler Shell, who's a pro and he's very good in these, did a 16.3. Brandon uh, Holtmeyer, who is another very good big block modified driver, um, he did a 16.3. I think Greg was telling me that he had been doing around you know 16 3 something like that so that seems to be about you know the the you know fast times um i was off of that i was like a 16 5 i think i was off a couple of tenths but you know the faster driver 16 3 seems to be about you know really really good if you can be somewhere in the mid to low 16s you're going to be you're going to be fast with these cars here now setup wise um yeah, no stagger all right with this car at this track um definitely a different combination than what i typically run uh at most tracks now we've got you know 250 and 175 up front um a lot of you can see here very very stiff left front shock you know just easy up shock trying to get that weight to the rear um on the on the right rear running you know reverse on the springs here these will be much softer in the feature because you know i racing will probably do 50 lap feature at this track and the track will get slick and i noticed last night um that having those softer springs definitely seems to help now here's the thing though um from what i've done so far and like i said i haven't done a whole lot here so we'll we'll learn more as we go but from everything that i had looked at you know in my testing and also the stuff i looked at in motec the speed that you're carrying, and even though these cars don't produce downforce like a winged, you know, sprint car does, they still do produce some downforce. And the amount of downforce that you're creating, uh, because of that, you know, you can actually run a little bit stiffer um, springs and still get quite a bit of grip because of the fact that the car is being sucked down so much. So definitely something to look at. Normally for a feature, you know, I would be like 150 on the right rear. You could probably do like a 175 and still be pretty good. I think that's what the feature setups got in is a 175 in the right rear. Now, wheel spacing, droop chain, all of that. You can see we got the axle lead straight up and a 491 on the gear. I actually found going to a 486 um, was a little too tall which is shocking. I figured that we, a 486 would be the gear, but the gear ratios for these big blocks, I've been doing a lot of testing with them and it's very unique, man. I, I need to do some more testing to really dial it in, but there are situations where a little bit shorter gear is actually more beneficial if you can keep the car hooked up, if you can prevent the wheel spin. So you gotta be really good on that throttle. If you're someone who's got a heavy foot, the taller gear is gonna help you. But if you've got good throttle control, Man, going to a shorter gear can actually be beneficial, and it really helps these things pull out of the corner. So, anyways, that's the setup. Let's go turn a few laps. All right, now, a couple of things um, when you're running the big block mods here at Bristol. One thing is the transition. I've talked about it with all the other cars, but that transition, especially on the exit, the transition from the corner to the straightaway can be bad okay it really can 
if you hit that wrong, it's gonna push you up to the wall. And it's really deceiving too, because you think like, oh, I'm just kind of gradually getting up there. And then it's like all of a sudden, bam, you're in the wall. So that, that's one thing to really be careful of. Another thing is, is when you're, if you're running low, it's really easy to catch that shelf. And if you do that, it's gonna wash out the front end. and push you up the track. See, there's that transition that I was talking about. Now this track, once again, is like all the other cars. When it's fresh, you'll be around the bottom. Um, and as the track slicks off, you're going to move up higher and higher. You know, the wing cars, like I said, I think is going to stay bottom. But every other car that doesn't have the downforce of the wing cars, it's going to move up. Last night in the race that we ran, as the track slicked off, we all moved up to the top. And that seemed to be the fastest line. You can run uh, the bottom when it gets slick. But staying below the slick and maintaining your momentum was definitely tricky. Now there was some uh, cut down lines that you could run, where you could actually get a run down the banking, cut down underneath somebody, and then you would kind of slide up like that. I actually think this is gonna be a fun track to race at. Well, I, I know it is, I did a race last night, it was a lot of fun. So you can have some really good battles with people in these cars here. I think, like I said before, this, this track is really just tailor-made for the big block modifieds. It's a lot of fun. See that bump right there? That's that transition. You gotta be careful with that, man, because it can, as the track slicks off, that gets more and more, more and more pronounced. That's gonna do it all for this video. Now, really quick, before I go, like I said, down in the link below, you'll find down in the link below, <laughs> nailed it. Down in the description below, you will find a link for the SSR Discord. Now in that Discord, you gotta join the Discord. And it's really simple, just click on the link and just join the Discord. And then in the Discord, you'll find a channel that is SSR free setups. Go there, scroll to the bottom and you'll find the Bristol setups, okay? You just click the link to download them put them in you know the the folder in iRacing and you're set and I'll have um, setups for big block mods super pro late 360 410 winged you know midgets and uh, non-wing sprint cars 360 non-wing sprint cars um, because if you're uh, nobody I don't think anybody's gonna be running the non-wing 410 official races um, we'll be doing it in our league but I don't think anybody will be running officials because uh, this track's probably going to be too much for, for a lot of people that don't run non-wing. It's a lot of fun. I think it's awesome. But anyways, that's here and over there. So that is down in the description below. Also, if you want to join me, like I said, for my live stream, I do live stream every Wednesday and Thursday on Twitch. Link down in the description below. It's a ton of fun. Um, we have just an awesome group that comes out. I live stream our league races. Tonight we're running Charlotte 360s and then we're running big block mods at Fairbury. And then tomorrow night is our non-wing Thursday where we run midgets and non-wing 410s. It's a lot of fun. So if you want to come out, check that out. You'll see me building, creating setups, adjusting, just all kinds of stuff, man. It's a ton of fun. So that's down in the description below as well. And then finally, if you would please hit the like button, share the video. I know another YouTuber asking you to do that, but please do that. It helps grow the channel. And I, you know, I've got just a ton of stuff planned for this channel this year. Um, last year was absolutely incredible. And, you know, I want to have this year be even better. And I think sim racing is just now, um, you know, we're starting to see the real potential behind it. I think it's got a ton of room to grow in terms of becoming a top legitimate esport, you know what I mean? And I want to help do that. And with all you guys on the channel and hopefully more to come, I think we can. So please 
like share subscribe all that other good stuff comment down below right if you want to see a certain video or something like that you know put a comment down there i do check the comments every now and then so anyways that's gonna do it as always thank you very much for joining me i really appreciate it i hope you like this and until next time as always i want to wish you good luck good racing take care Oh, 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 oh,